known for a while now that it's likely America has far more cases of coronavirus than the official numbers suggest. Now, a new study says that 86% of coronavirus cases are asymptomatic, meaning the carriers don't know they have it, but they can still spread it. Dr. Marty McCarry is a professor of public health at Johns Hopkins University, and he joins us tonight. Doctor, thanks so much for coming on. So asymptomatic, does that mean that there's no indication at all that the people who are infected are? Yeah, it means no cough, no sneeze, no uh, sore throat, nothing. And, you know, many people have mild symptoms and blow it off. This study was based on Chinese patients, and again, it was based on those diagnosed and tested we know that those numbers have not been reliable. Look, China has not been transparent. At the worst time, they were reporting 3,000 deaths. I called doctors in China, and they said they weren't even counting the body bags. They had so many bodies, they were busy. They were not in the pr business of reporting. They were in the business of taking care of people. So I, I, I'm a little skeptical about this study, but we do know that about half of people, if we look at the Diamond Princess and other examples, uh, probably have no symptoms or mild symptoms. Do we have any idea why some people exhibit no symptoms while others just get creamed by this? I've read a number of accounts of people in their 40s who were knocked off their feet by this and wound up in intensive care. And, and with no, with, who didn't have emphysema or asthma, why are some people more susceptible to it? Do we know? Everybody's immune system is different, Tucker. And we know generally it's hard for this virus to hurt young, healthy people. But it's those exceptions that make us cautious about giving people sort of a, a you know, green light to go out there and do whatever they want. Young, healthy people tend to be the community transmitters, and they affect the most vulnerable. This is one of those rare things where what we do as healthy people affects somebody we've never met before. Now, one piece of good news amidst all this bad news has been that a study published today by the American Academy of Pediatrics shows that only one child died out of 2,100 children infected. So that's good news for kids. Well, it is. It's, it's very good news. But for people in their, let's say, 40s through mid-60s, which we think of as prime of life years, really, I mean, most many people are vigorous during that time. Is there anything that we're not aware of that might make a person susceptible to being really hurt by this? The inflection point, Tucker, increases after age 40. The 40 and younger is probably the strongest population in terms of their immune response. But remember, it's anything that affects that immune response, and there's some things we don't understand. For example, people with seizure disorders are at increased risk. Those with disability hmm. may not have the increased lung capacity from being disabled. Those with organ transplants, those on chemo, those with certain medications, and of course, just with advanced age and being totally healthy, that risk goes way up as well. Yes. Interesting. Uh, last question. We, we spoke to someone last night who said that healthcare providers, nurses, for example, e even young, healthy nurses, seem to be at much higher risk for getting hurt by the disease. Do we know why? Well, we know that healthcare workers are at the highest risk of getting this infection. I'm really concerned about our nation's nurses, respiratory therapists, doctors. And while there may not be a physiologic explanation, there is certainly an exposure explanation because in the hospital, those infections sometimes can be ubiquitous. Uh, so I am concerned about healthcare workers because we're about to see a double whammy of a, of a reduced workforce and a massive influx of patients. That's what we're concerned about. We only have 100,000 oh, yeah. ICU beds in the U.S. right now, and we could be seeing hundreds of thousands of critical care patients. I bet that's right. I hope it's not. Doctor, thank you very much for that. Good to be with you, Tucker.